Welcome. Today we will be taking a look at the notes worksheet entitled Investigation of Polar Graphs. And this is a fairly low-key lesson. What we'll be doing today is just looking at a variety of equations in polar form and taking a look at the intricate graphical patterns that they create on the coordinate plane. And so we'll look at some of the characteristics and so forth. Um, some really fascinating patterns that can be created with some of these equations. So anyway, let's kind of dive right in. Uh, there's a, a review example at the top of your page here, so I think we should kind of start with that piece and then move forward from there. So example one on your paper says change the form of the equation. And so really two different ways to represent graphical patterns on the coordinate plane, rectangular form and polar form. And so what we're going to do is sort of just convert from one to the other. Uh, in this case, we're going to go from rectangular to polar. And then in the other case for part B, we're going to go polar to rectangular. And so let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, a couple things jump out at me right away. This happens to be a circle. I see that x squared plus y squared. Um, it's in a slightly different form than what we've seen before. In fact, it's easier for our purposes here. But um, let, let's go for it. So first and foremost, the left-hand side should kind of jump right off the page at you. What I see is x squared plus y squared. And you know we kind of defined this a few times before, but essentially x squared plus y squared is r squared. So your job here is to create, um, well, change essentially all of the x's and y's to r's and thetas. And so in this case, x squared plus y squared is r squared. All right, nice. And then uh, really the 6 can't do too much with that, so let's go ahead and put that in place. But the x value, what we've come up with before and what we will see again, is that the x value is very simply r cosine theta. So the horizontal component denoted by x is really r times the cosine of our angle. Excellent. Now, I would encourage us to get this into what I would call explicit form, meaning a single r equals. And I think we can do this relatively fast. It looks like I do have a factor of r on both sides here. And so I can go ahead and treat it as exactly that and divide it out. And so I end up getting this right here. So as you can see, really two different ways to uh, described mathematically a circle on a coordinate plane, uh, the rectangular form up here, and then the polar form right down here. And polar form, nice and straightforward. Okay, great. That'll be the first one. Let's go ahead and take care of the second one. And uh, not sure what type of pattern this would create on the coordinate plane. Maybe if we see it in rectangular, something will jump out at us. All right, well, let's go for it. Uh, first order of business is we have this fraction down there. Not a big fan of this denominator. So I think, guys, let's clean this up somehow. Let's uh, either cross multiply or just somehow bring this on up to the other side. And so I would get r times 8 cosine of theta plus 2 sine of theta, and that equals 5. OK, now these two things by themselves, not much we can do with. But I do see a nice factor of r distributing it in. And, and I could see this really forming some good things here. So let's go ahead and bring that R inside. And I think we're in a, in a good position. All right, so remember the goal. I should have said that at the beginning of Part B. But essentially, the goal is to change all of the R's and thetas to X's and Y's. So to go from polar to rectangular. And so to do this, of course, I see this piece right here. That should jump out. And then I see this piece right here. That should jump out. So let's go for it. Uh, r cosine theta, by definition, we just saw it on part A, r cosine theta is x. And now it's hopefully really clicking for you. r sine of theta is y. And nice transformation right there, converted it over. And you end, end up getting a nice linear equation here, as a matter of fact. So uh, it looks like this equation up here in polar form forms a line on the coordinate plane. I would love for us to, well, I, yeah, I'd, I'd love for us to go one step further with this. This is fine, of course. It is in rectangular form. I guess I would encourage us to get it in explicit form there, kind of an mx plus b situation, if that's all right with you. Again, not mandatory by any means, but eh, why not? So let's go ahead and divide by 2. And I'm getting a negative 4x and plus the 5 halves, something like that. So we put the part a in explicit form, the r equals. So might as well do that for part b, put it into the y equals. Wonderful. All right, so uh, two good equations, just going from one to the other, just offering a nice review. OK, now, before we kind of dive into a lot of the calculator work here, 
uh, one of the things that we'll be talking about, one of the characteristics, will be symmetry. And so really there are going to be three types of symmetry that you're going to see over the course of uh, this lesson. And so I want to actually sort of clarify and, and make sure we understand what is what. So the first order of business, it says, uh, use the three polar coordinate systems to draw three graphs with polar axis symmetry. Now this would be sort of the rectangular, or really the polar equivalent, I should say, of x-axis symmetry. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little x-axis underneath that. So when I see polar axis, for, for lack of a better description, just think about it in terms of the horizontal axis, the x-axis in rectangular form. We haven't really seen this piece, but theta equals pi over 2 is actually a vertical line on the coordinate plane. Because if you sort of think about it, all of these values have theta being equal to pi over 2. Hopefully, oh, there we go, a little better. Theta equals pi over 2. Also, over here, down here, theta is equal pi, uh, to pi over 2. Because now I would have a negative r value down here with a pi over 2 um, angle. So anyway, long story short here, it's basically this vertical line is the theta equals pi over 2 line. Or, again, the rectangular equivalent would essentially be the y-axis symmetry. And pole symmetry, the rectangular equivalent would just be origin symmetry, sometimes called 180 degree rotational symmetry around the origin, or in this case around the pole. So you know what we'll do is we'll take just a moment here and draw a very three, uh, quick three rudimentary graphs and uh, kind of move on with uh, some of the equations. So it says uh, use the co polar coordinate systems to draw three graphs with the three symmetries here. So I'm going to just do one with polar axis, just something nice and easy, something like this, something, a circle that would be like that. And you can see right here, uh, try to do this a little better for you. If I fold that over the x-axis or the polar axis, one part of the graph would fold onto the other part of the graph. So that would have polar axis symmetry. Um, just some of the other ones that we're going to see here, something like this for theta equals pi over 2, something like that. And you can see again, same situation, everybody. If I took this part of the graph and, and folded it over that vertical line, it would land on the other part of the graph right there. Um, I could draw a circle for the third one here, the pole symmetry, but I think I'm not going to do that. I think I'm going to do one of the others that we're going to see. Um, this is what's going to be called a bow tie. And it looks something like this, where if you basically took this graph and rotated it around 180 degrees in relation to the origin there, or the pole, um, it would form the same graph. So think about that graph that I tried to draw right up here. If I rotated this around 180 degrees, would it be the exact same graph? Yeah. And so again, just the three symmetries. Let's go ahead and write them in place just so we don't forget about them. This would be polar axis symmetry. This would be theta equals pi over 2 symmetry. And we'll call it exactly that. I know that's a little obscure, but that's exactly what we'll call it. And then this would be pole symmetry. So those are the three types that you're going to keep a lookout for over the course of this lesson. All right, nice. And so we're going to just see a variety of equations, some very uh, simple in nature and producing fairly simple um, graphical patterns on the coordinate plane. Others a little more in-depth and a little more intricate, and in my opinion, a little more interesting. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that momentarily. Um, I think you will need your graphing calculator for this. So even before, well, actually, let me go to my next page here first. There we go. And so uh, it, as you can see, it's entitled Polar Equations and Graphs. And so now I'm going to bring up my calculator. And just a couple preliminary things to just get us started and then kind of talk about what I need us to do. Uh, first and foremost, let's go ahead and go to the Mode button on the calculator. And please go Radiant Mode if you would. And then right underneath also, I need you to go to Polar Form. So the Polar Mode right there. And so highlight those two pieces. So Radian and Polar. Now what I'm going to have you do is actually go to the window first. This is going to seem a little silly. But I'm going to ask us to go ahead and change our window a little bit. And then we'll actually probably change it again as we graph a couple equations. So you kind of see a few things here. We're going to have basically our theta. And everything will be R in terms of theta. And then there still is this horizontal and vertical component to this on the coordinate plane. So um, 
let's go ahead and do the X's. Let's go negative 5 to 5. That's what I have on my sheet there. And so go by 1's. So negative 5 to 5, go by 1's. And then same on the Y's. Again, this is probably going to change up a little bit when we get into the graphing piece. But go under the Y's, negative 5 to 5, and go by 1's, please. All right, leave the thetas as is. And as you can see, by the way, there, you know, there's your 2 pi essentially. So we're going to graph our thetas from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, good. Now, in the past, I've done this lesson just really having students work in teams and in pairs and just kind of going through it and then checking in with me if they were unsure about filling in the blank. Uh, obviously, that's not quite possible with the way this is formatted. But I guess I would ask you to kind of do this piece by piece. So what I would encourage you to do is almost like pause the video, go through all of number one, see what you can do, and then come on back, and then you'll listen to me and see if you got a few things right, if you, and, and just see how you did with it and if you came up with the appropriate conclusions. Keep your numbers simple. When you see A's and N's and stuff like that, nice, simple numbers, 1's, 2's, 3's, 4's, et cetera, et cetera. Don't get too crazy with those. All right, so maybe try it. Try number one there. The first one you're going to do, and maybe we can start boxing some of these up here, is just R equals A cosine theta. So uh, we're going to use that, that uh, window that I just gave you, and then we'll go for it. All right. Well, here's what I'm thinking. What you're going to want to do here is go to your Y equals, which of course is R equals, and I'm just going to type in something like 3 cosine theta and just sort of see what happens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit graph at this point, and I end up getting this, and this is actually my, my one concern. So uh, if you've done this already, my apologies. But when you get an opportunity, go to the zoom button at the top, and let's square it. And you get a sort of a better feel for it. What that does is it just makes all the tick marks evenly spaced, horizontal and then vertical as well. And so you can see, uh, in this case, I did r equals 3 cosine theta. And um, you know I could do 4 cosine theta or something like that, whatever the case may be. And regardless, you see that in, in each of these, I get a circle. So kind of seen this a couple times before. In fact, I think it's at the top of your page. But a, a nice value in front there, cosine theta, um, is going to form a circle. One endpoint is going to be at the pole, and then it goes off, in this case, to the right. Uh, it says, what symmetry does the graph have? So is it polar axis? Is it theta equals pi over 2? Or is it pole? So I'm going to bring that back on up. And this looks nice polar axis symmetry. Fold that part over the polar axis and uh, over the horizontal part, and it works nicely there. So I would argue that these cosine graphs are going to have polar axis symmetry. So put that in, the horizontal x-axis symmetry, for lack of a better description. Uh, this is a good one right here. I'm curious if you figured this one out. It says the A value is, uh, well, that's not grammatically correct. The A value determines the, and let's see. So I put in 4, by the way. And so in this case, take a look at that 4. Um, it's not the radius, but it is 1, 2, 3, 4. It looks like in this case, the, the A value is the diameter. Let's go ahead and check that out. Maybe do it one more, and let's try five just to see. And in this case, one, two, three, four, and five. It looks like that is the, the diameter. So not the radius, but the A value determines the diameter of the circle. Nice. Uh, let's see. Let's do part D. Graph R equals A cosine theta with the A value negative. Okay, and then how did this change the graph? So let's go ahead and do exactly that. I'm just going to go right on in. How about insert a negative on that piece? And let's see what that one does. Ah, OK. So it was over here. Remember, I had a circle on this side right here, starting at the pole and going to the right. Now what it basically did is it flipped it over, and now it's kind of shooting off to the left, starting at the pole and going to the left. And so what it basically did is it flipped it, over this vertical line right here. I hope everyone's in agreement on that. Was over here, now flipped over here. And so that's exactly what I'm going to write. Uh, basically, it is flipped over the line theta equals pi over 2. 
All right, good. So that vertical line, that quote y-axis, that's what it flipped over. All right, nice. I hope everyone's okay with that piece right there. Uh, if we can maybe change it up a little, just maybe go a little smaller, see if everything works. Yep, so that A value, still definitely the, the radius, I'm sorry, the diameter there, one, two. Okay, nice. I'm going to go to my next board. As mentioned, it'd be great if you can pause and then kind of just keep doing these at your convenience there. If you have any issues at all, obviously kind of pause and then put a question mark by it. But uh, let's do number two. Again, nice and simple there. R equals A times sine of theta. So let's go ahead and pull that off. And I'm going to go back on up. And how about I do something like 3 sine of theta. So nice and straightforward, just trying to keep my A values pretty tight there. And I get that. Looks like another circle situation, but in this case, starting at the pole, it went upward from the pole. And so 1, 2, and 3. There's my diameter. The 3 is the diameter. I might just go check that one more time. How about if I put 4 in? Yep, and now the diameter is 1, 2, 3, and 4, as you can see. Nice. So it says, what is the shape of each graph? Of course, it is a circle. So when we have A cosine of theta and A sine of theta, um, we get a circle on the coordinate plane. Nice and straightforward. Uh, let's see, what symmetry does the graph have? So let me bring that up here. And I hope everyone's in agreement on this piece. It looks like there is my line of symmetry. And basically, if I take this half of the graph and fold it over that line of symmetry, it would land on this half of the graph right there. So I see that as that vertical line, what we would consider the y-axis in polar form. It's just called beta equals pi over 2. All right, so, and you'll see that a lot, by the way. Cosines typically will have polar axis, and sines typically will have theta equals pi over 2. There might be some variation on that piece, but not much. Uh, the A value determines the diameter again. Let's throw that in. Doing great. And then it says graph uh, with a negative value for A. So let's do exactly that. And so, guys, I go on back, and I'm just going to go ahead and insert a negative there. And when I insert that negative, take a look at what happens to the circle. You could probably foresee what would happen there. And I'm hoping you kind of understood that it was up here, and then it flipped sort of um, on the other side of the polar axis, basically. Okay, good. So how did this change the graph? It flipped over the polar axis. So I could probably give you one, and obviously I'm not going to do that at this stage, but I could probably type in an equation without you seeing it, and if it formed a circle, you could probably tell me what it's going to be. So for example, just you know, making stuff up here, if I did something like negative 6 cosine theta, you could probably picture that graph right now, knowing that it would be um, one endpoint at the pole going off to the left, and the diameter would be 6 units. And let's see. So something like that. So negative of A, cosine, means it's going to the left. And take a look at our diameter there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Nice. All right, so four directions with those four circles coming off the pole based on sine versus cosine and based on A being positive or negative. Nice. All righty. Let's go ahead and take care of number three. So let's go ahead and box these up, kind of do them all together there, sines and cosines sort of a little format for this. So it'll be A plus or A minus B sine of theta or cosine theta. And the graphs of these equations are called limosones. So that's how you pronounce this word right here, limosones. And the ratio of A to B determines a limosone's shape. So there are certain variations on what a limosone will look like, and we'll look at just a couple of those as we go through the process here. But basically, we're going to start out with um, one component and then kind of work our way from there. So again, these are going to be called limosones. So let's see what letter A says. And again, maybe you can go ahead and come on back and do what you need to do. All right, so letter A. Begin with a variety of equations that will produce limosones. In this case, have A over B being less than 1. 
So what this means, everybody, if A divided by B is less than 1, this means that A is going to be smaller than B. One more time, A is smaller than B. Okay, and then it says try A plus with cosine, A minus with cosine, A plus with sine, and A minus with sine. So each of these graphs is going to be a limosone with an inner loop. All right, we'll see that in. Kind of circle that piece. And it says determine how you can tell the direction of the limosone. All right, fair enough. So A has to be less than B. That's the key. So again, keep your numbers nice and simple. A less than B. So in this case, I'll just do an A and a B like that. And I don't know, let's do sine first. And just think about kind of the direction that it's opening. Um, I don't know if that will be phrased properly, but, but we'll see how that plays out momentarily. So how about this? Something like 1 plus 3 sine of theta. Let's go ahead and hit graph. And so here's how it kind of works here. You see it's sort of a limosone with a little inner loop there. So we have this inner loop and an outer loop, one inside of the other. Okay, pretty interesting. Um, and let's see what we have going on there. Uh, sine. Notice, sort of shooting upward, I guess that's how I would phrase it, kind of like what we saw with the circle, going upward, and that uh, looks like it has theta equals pi over 2 symmetry, all that good stuff right in there. Let's go ahead and just change things up, just kind of thinking on the spot. How about minus, and how do you think that would change? Ah, okay, so the minus in, in, uh, in front of the B, just kind of took it and flipped it over here, so now from the pole it's kind of opening downward. So it seems like sine produces kind of the vertical graphs, you know, either shooting up or shooting down at this stage. I don't know, that's just a conclusion that I'm drawing. Let's go on back, maybe just kind of looking at a couple things here. Let's do plus and let's do cosine. And maybe you can guess just sort of what this would look like. Nice, and there we go. So in this case, it looks like it shot off to the right, so cosine off to the right. Again, cosine, nice polar axis symmetry there. Hope everybody sees that. You could probably guess if I put a minus in place, and that's exactly what I'll do. I'll put a little minus in there and hit graph, and you can see it just kind of shoots it out to the left there from the pole. So it just says determine how you can tell the direction of the limosone. I don't know. I actually wrote all four out. So, so plus with cosine, moved it to the right. Minus with cosine, shot off to the left, and I hope that phrasing works for you. If, if not, please let me know. Um, let's see, and then we saw plus with sine. Oops. So plus on the sine, moved it up, and let's see, minus on the sine, moved it down. Sort of it, the, the graph shoots downward from the pole, basically. And, um, you know, just sort of thinking about a couple things here. What's interesting, I, I took a look at a couple of these. Look at the inner loop and the outer loop, by the way. And let's see if we can come up with a couple patterns. I don't think this is on your paper, but um, I see a couple of interesting things with this. Look at the numbers that I chose, 1 and 3, right? And take a look at that, just for a moment, the 1 and the 3. Hey, everybody, what is 1 plus 3? 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Look at the, quote, diameter of the outer loop. And everybody, bigger minus smaller, what's 3 minus 1? Uh, 3 minus 1 is 2. And look at the inner loop, 1, 2. Interesting. Let's play around with that just a touch. Um, maybe I'll do a plus in there. I don't know. Let's do, how about 2 and 4? Oops, hit the wrong button there. How about 2 and 4? And so what do you think here? Outer loop? Let's just see if my theory was correct. 2 plus 4, everybody, is 6. Think about that outer loop. And then inner loop. Bigger minus smaller, how about 4 minus 2 is 2? Yeah, let's see if it worked. So first of all, cosine, positive, going off to the right. Look at the outer loop, everybody, from that pole. Actually, this one, you can see that nice limosone. It's not circular. It comes out past the pole, or past the theta equals pi over 2, I should say, and then back to the pole. So it kind of looks like that. And uh, this is interesting. So from the pole, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Neat, 4 plus 2. And inner one, 4 minus 2, 2. Ah, pretty cool. 
So if I gave you um, a graph for a limosome with an inner loop, just kind of like this, you might be able to tell me exactly what the equation is. So again, it's hard for me to do that up here, but again, uh, I'm just kind of thinking off the cuff. If I gave you this right here, could you picture it? This would be a limosome with an inner loop. Think about the diameter of the outer. Think about the diameter of the smaller. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4 plus 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, 1, 2, 3, there's the inner one. And so you can kind of see that sign going upward. Awesome. So patterns, guys, that's all it is. Pretty interesting graphical formations at this stage. We'll see some more complicated ones soon. All right, let me go to my next window then. It says, uh, repeat the above step with A over B being equal to 1. So what that means, of course, is A and B are the same. And these lemosomes are actually called cardioids. And it says they are in the shape of a, and let's see what that would look like. So guys, bring that calculator up again. And so this will not be in uh, one with an inner loop here. I think I might bring my numbers down a touch. So A and B have to be the same for these. So the first one, A was less than B. Here, guys, A is equal to B, so something like this. So we're not going to get a limosome with an inner loop. We will get an, a limosome called a cardioid. And I hit graph there. Eh, too big, I think, too big. Let's bring that in. So how about this? And notice, by the way, plus in sign moved it upward. And there we go. You can kind of see that sort of coming like this. Nice, nice. I could probably get it to look more like what I want. It by just by changing the window, but maybe you get a sense of it. It's called a cardioid for a reason. So cardio, everybody, is, uh, stands for what? Well, I've had students over the years tell me it looked like an apple, but that's not quite right. It's a heart, so it's a heart-shaped curve. So I'll take a look at yours. I'll take a look at mine one more time. Yeah, not too bad. Not great, but not too bad at all. All right, so uh, A over B is equal to 1. For a limosome, it's called a cardioid because it's heart-shaped. Okay, does your conjecture about the direction of the graph stay the same? Yeah, absolutely, guys. Plus with sine, it's going to shoot upward, et cetera, et cetera, like we did. All right, let's see. We're going to do just a couple more of these, not do too much with it. Uh, it says repeat the above step with A over B being between 1 and 2. This is interesting. So A is bigger than B, but not greater than 2B. So I don't know, maybe like a 3 over 2 or something like that. In fact, I think that's what I'll do. So let's give it a try here, change things up a little. So how about A is bigger than B, but not more than double B. So 3 and 2, that sounds right. Let's do a cosine just to change it up a little. And I'm going to hit graph again. Notice cosine moving off there. And as it says, this is what's called a dimpled lemosome. So eh, you don't quite get that heart in there, but eh, it's fairly close. So you get a little dimple. Interesting. All right. Not much there, just plus and cosine moved out to the right, though. Officially, most of the graph is to the right. Notice it has polar axis symmetry. So some good stuff there. Obviously, everything is connecting nicely. I repeat the above step now with A over B being greater than or equal to 2. These are what are called convex lemosomes. So um, I'll just do, how about a, well, let me bring this in. How about a 3 and a 1? And let's do a minus. Why not? Just change, get that direction. Should be shooting off to the left here. And kind of tough to tell. This is a convex. Yeah, maybe a better window there. But So um, convex limosone on this piece. You don't see too much of a dimple here, but there should be something that doesn't make it perfectly circular. That's all. All right, not bad. Okay. Well, guys, let's go ahead and jump into E and F. First and foremost, it says, what type of symmetry do all of the cosine lemosomes have? And uh, we saw it before on the circles. This is basically just an extension of that. All these are going to have um, polar axis symmetry. What type of symmetry do all the sine lemosomes have? And that would definitely be the theta equals pi over 2 symmetry. And so again, if you're unsure about something, just call me over at some point. We can kind of take a look at it together. All righty, on to the next. Ah, this is a good one. So different formation here. 
So A sine of N theta and A cosine of N theta. And so the same thing, N here, just nice and simple, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and uh, A stays the same as what we saw before, and uh, some interesting ones here. So I'm going to get into it. Maybe you'll pause and come on back. I'll leave that totally to your discretion. So a little different type here. I'm going to just keep my numbers nice and easy. How about uh, let's go 4 and let's go sine of 5 theta, something like that. Just making my numbers up, and I'm going to hit graph. Ah, nice. I like that one a lot. So look at this one for sine, uh, 4 sine of 5 theta, and you get a little flower. It's what's called a rose-shaped graph, as we'll write in momentarily. But let me play around a little bit. Maybe uh, let's change that up. How about let's do 6, see if that comes out. Ooh, nice. So 6, take a look. I've got more petals on this one. You can count the petals here. I'm going to ask you about that in just about two or three minutes. So 6. Let's do 7. So 7. Ah, interesting. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, I missed one. 7. So, yep, 7 of them. Kind of cool. Look at the symmetry on this one. Um, what would you say the symmetry is here? I'm going to venture to guess it's theta equals pi over 2, and it was sine, by the way. Let's change it. Let's go cosine just for kicks. Uh, let's bring that back in, do it all over again. So how about something like that for cosine of 3 theta? There we go, 3 theta. Look how many petals, 1, 2, 3. Look at the symmetry. Shouldn't be a shocker at this point. Cosine produced a nice looking theta, I'm sorry, polar axis, my fault. Good, good, let's keep going. How about changing it to 4? Look how many petals. Ah, interesting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight petals. Huh, fascinating. Let's see. How about when I go five? How many petals am I going to get here? Ah, only five. I'm wondering if you're seeing a couple patterns here. All right. Well, let's um, let's let's go for it. Let's put this in. So first of all, what is the shape of the graph? Each one. Call a rose if you want to call it a flower. That's more than fine, of course. Not a problem. So um, describe the symmetry. So R equals A sine of N theta. We'll always have, how shall I put this? Let's see. Always we'll have theta equals pi over 2. But sometimes, and we'll talk about that in a little more detail, what happens when I do something like this? So let me go on back. In this case, what if I do sine of, say, 4 theta? Look at this one. Now look at that. That's kind of interesting. It definitely has theta equals pi over 2, right? I can take this and flip it over and get that. But everybody, doesn't it have polar axis symmetry too? This flipping over the, the horizontal line, doesn't that fit nicely? And... Doesn't it also have pole symmetry, where if I rotated this around 180 degrees, would it be the same graph? So it kind of depends on N, um, but sometimes polar axis and pole. Interesting. So it's always going to have theta equals pi over 2, but sometimes these two as well. All right. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can then phrase this one right. So cosine, you know always cosine is going to have polar axis. No doubt about it. But, and again, I won't bring up the calculator, but sometimes when n is even, that's the key, I believe, but sometimes it'll have theta equals pi over 2 and pole symmetry as well. Neat. All right, very cool. So I'm wondering if you kind of worked this out yourself here based on what I did. It says, is it possible to determine the number of petals for each rose based on the equation? Graph a variety of equations and change the value of n and then make a conjecture about the number of rose petals. So I'll be very fast on this since I've already kind of done it. But essentially, let's see, this was 
4 theta, so n was 4, and notice 8 petals. If n is 5, 5 petals. If n is 6, though, 12 petals. If n is 7, 7 petals. So it's all based on n being odd or even. So here's what I have on my paper. It is n petals if n is odd, and it's double the number, so it's 2n if n is even. And that's where that symmetry thing came into play here. And I think that's what I'll write over here. Um, how about something like if n is even. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, now we haven't really talked about A, but that A value definitely comes up in the graph there. So in terms of the roses, everybody, let's see. So what was my A value here? A was 4. Let me count it out here for you. And everybody, this one's the easiest one for me. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, it's the length of the pedal, essentially. So the A value is really the distance really the length of the pedal, but here's what I have on my sheet. The distance from the pole to the end of a pedal. So let's just go ahead and check that out one time just to see. You guys are more than welcome just to kind of sit back and watch. What if I just did two? You can see, obviously, it's, it's smaller. Let's see, change that up a little bit. So you can kind of Sort of change the size, you can change the number of petals based on A and N. So kind of fascinating looking graph here. Now, it just says predict. We won't be able to kind of do these on our particular window. It won't show up. But basically, if, if N is 17, it's an odd number, you're going to get 17 petals. 28 is N, so N is even, and so you double in order to get the number of petals. So this one would have 56 petals. If I was to graph this one, again, not that I could find a window to do it, quite frankly, but if I could, it would have 97 petals. Perfect. All right, so those roses, some nice stuff with that. But I like that piece, guys, because A and N are literally embedded in the graph of the equation. And uh, that's great. Okay, uh, a couple more here that we'll take a look at. This one, we're going to have to do some fancy footwork. So now n is just going to be stuck at 2, so 2 theta. But now we're going to do sort of a perfect square here. That just sort of helps. And also, it's going to be r squared on the other side. So we're going to have to figure out how to type this in. And it says the graphs of these equations are called lemniscuits. Lemniscuits. And uh, graph the cosine first. And it says you must put it into two separate. So in this case, everybody, because I have an r squared, in order to get r, I have to square root. So I take the positive of the root. That's this one right here. And then I take the negative of the root. So again, I'm going to have to undo that square right up there. Square root both sides. Take the positive and the negative. So describe the shape. And let's go ahead and pull that off, everybody. I'll show you what this one is. And uh, let's see. So first and foremost, everyone give me a big square root on that. And I'm just going to pick a nice perfect square there. I'm going to do 9 for 3 squared. So keep your eye on 3. Maybe that will come up. And let's do cosine 2 theta. Now, of course, because I have the two components, I have to do the negative of the same thing. So negative 9 cosine 2 theta. All right. Well, let's see how this does play out. I'm going to go ahead and hit graph. And it's not ideal. I should tell you that this does connect. Calculator just doesn't want to go ahead and pull that off for you. So this does connect and makes kind of a full, sometimes it's called in, an infinity graph, sometimes it's called a bow tie graph. Those are the two pieces, but it sort of looks exactly like this white cursor here. So describe the shape, and this is what you're going to write in. I'm going to put it in quotes, just as this is how we would kind of read it. Call it either a bow tie or an infinity, something like that. Wonderful. What type of symmetry? Let's see. Let's bring that on up. And it is cosine, so you kind of knew. Uh, but although I see a couple good things here. It looks like this one has all three, doesn't it? So it definitely has polar axis, this coming on there. 
I say it also has theta equals pi over 2, everyone. Doesn't this part fold over theta equals pi over 2 and fit right on there? And everybody, does it have pole symmetry? If I can rotate that around, this rotates and that rotates, uh, it looks like it has all three. So for cosine, um, I'm going to say all three. So definitely all cosines have polar. So that for sure. But in this case, it also had theta equals pi over 2, and it had pole. Kind of like that. Uh, and the A value, so remember, I put in 9 for, for 3 squared. So let's see if we can track the 3 here. And there it is. 1, 2, and 3. And so you kind of see in that case, it's really just the distance from the pole to the end of a, uh, the pedal. In this case, notice it's a 2 theta, so um, I just really have those two pieces. All right, so the A value determines, I just have, again, same distance from the pole to the end of a pedal. All right, beautiful. Uh, just real quick, we'll do the sign and start to bring this to a conclusion here. This is definitely a long one, takes a lot of time to grasp these. But let's go ahead and do sign. Now, this is a little interesting in terms of how it graphs and how it changes. So what you would think intuitively here actually does not happen. So a cosine definitely goes horizontal, sort of like what we would think, but the signs do not. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice you end up just getting a little rotation on this. So the graph that was along here going sort of horizontal, one pedal to the left, one pedal to the right, has now kind of rotated. And it looks like it has rotated, just from my perspective, um, about 45 degrees. Is everyone okay with that description? So this part that was over here kind of rotated up here. This part that was here rotated down here. Just seems like the entire bow tie has rotated 45 degrees. So that's what I'm going to write here. And again, if you don't like that description, see if you can come up with a different one or um, you know, just let me know. But I have rotated pi over 4 or 45 degrees counterclockwise. And then it says describe the graphical difference. There we got it um, between sine and cosine. And then I guess the symmetry, let's put that in. In this case, notice the symmetry, it's not all three. Let's go ahead and see which one or two of these it is. All right, ah, fascinating. Definitely not pole symmetry, I'm sorry, not polar axis. Can't flip it on here. It's definitely not theta equals pi over 2. The only one I'm seeing, everybody, is pole symmetry. Rotate that around the pole 180 degrees, and it's the same graph. So it, a different one. It's probably the one abnormality or the aberration, I guess, compared to some of the other ones. All right, cool. I like this one. So we're going to do this right here, just a strict, uh, straight up n theta. And we're going to kind of change theta and make it a little periodic. So go in uh, theta and then theta plus 2 pi and then theta plus 4 pi just to keep it going. So we're going to, this will just go from 0 to 2 pi basically. Then we want to go further, the next interval, the next interval, and the next interval. Interesting. So it says graph these equations as a group put them simultaneously into the R1, R2, and the R3, and it says keep the, the n value close to zero. So you can do this really with any n value, but the closer to zero, just the better it looks on the plane, if I remember correctly. So I don't know, maybe I'll just do a point 0.2 right in the middle there and see what happens. So interesting shape, I like this one. So I'll show you what this looks like. Please, again, do it with me, just um, do it on your own, whatever. So just n theta, right? So point 0.2 theta. And then I'm going to do point 0.2, and this is going to let us take the next interval, so theta plus 2 pi. Then how about point 0.2, and then how about the next interval? So this would be theta plus 4 pi, so there's a continuation there. Oops, let's go on back. And then how about one more, just for a good measure here, point 0.2. And there's my theta, and how about a 6 pi, everybody? All right, let's go ahead and see how it plays out. Get the first, second, next one. Nice. 
So it did one, then the next, then the next, and then the next. And you can see when all put together, it forms a really beautiful spiral there. So what is the shape? As you can see, it is a spiral. Nice, not much to kind of talk about in terms of the characteristics there, but uh, certainly you can create a pretty cool looking spiral on the polar coordinate system. Um, you simply couldn't do that on the rectangular. All right, and in number seven, kind of our last one right here. Uh, it's called the butterfly curve. So graph the following equation. Huh, interesting. So cosine of five theta, and by the way, just on your paper, how about write it like this? Cosine of five theta squared. Remember, that's what that means. And then sine of 3 theta plus 0.3, and we'll change our window a little bit, it looks like. And let's, let's see. All right. So, guys, go back, if you would. Clear, clear, and again and again. And let's type in this last one. So I think I saw cosine, actually, let's go parentheses there. Cosine 5 theta, close, close and then do a square, and then plus sine 3 theta, close them, and then how about a plus 3 or plus 0.3, interesting. Okay, so I have that, and then let's see, it, it said change the, on your window there, so uh, we're going to change the step to 0 0.08. Okay, so everyone, if you would, with me, 0 0.08 on that step. And in the x min, it wants us to go from negative 4 to 4. In the y min, it wants us to go negative 2 to 2. All right. So I kind of put that into the mix, changed my window up, and this is what is called the butterfly curve. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. And as you can see, it, the name speaks for itself. Oh, very nice. So again, just some interesting graphical patterns with that. I forget where I saw that one, but I, I kind of like it. All right, guys, and then the last piece, and we'll round this out. So it says on your paper, try to come up with your own interesting graphs on the polar coordinate plane. Use one or more equations. You could do the Z trig window, or you can just do any window you'd like. Change up the maxes, the mins, or the steps, and see if you can really create something unique or intricate or just downright cool. I'll tell you what, if you can come up with something that just knocks my socks off, I'll throw some extra credit your way. So see if you can come up with something that's just really awesome on the, on the polar coordinate system. Your call, no conditions, no restrictions. See what you can come up with. All right, so just to make sure you're comfortable with some of the characteristics there, a few of the names and so forth. Uh, you know, if I gave you a graph, you could probably come up with the equation based on today's lesson. Excellent. Thanks, guys. And if you have any questions, certainly just let me know.